I've got the B lever here. The B lever's job is to hold the shutter blades open when you hold your finger on the shutter release. It pivots on a post here on that plate and is held in position with a screw with its return spring around a uh, groove on the screw. It's important that this spring stays seated around the groove of the screw it doesn't get trapped underneath it. That's good. Now I'll get this spring hooked over. Getting this end hooked over the arm here is, yeah that worked fine. And I can go back and lift this other end up and have it to the inside of this lever. And that drops into position. So as the shutter's cocked, it swings, arms the flash sync mechanism here and the shutter release will act on this piece and you can hear it unhook and allow that mechanism to run down. So that's all good. And the shutter release lever can go in place. It's only a very small stumpy looking thing in this shutter. The spring on these is awkwardly shaped. It was almost like it was an afterthought. You have to hook it into the case at that point and swing the arm into place. It has to be tucked down into the case so it's underneath this uh, flash sink lever there and doesn't foul that. Alright, well that's all good. That's our shutter basically assembled and brings us to the main ring here. This is called the main lever. Why they didn't call it the main ring or something, I'm blowed if I know, but they called it the main lever. So I'm just cleaning these surfaces. There's a fine spring on this piece here that's called the bird pawl. Be careful when you're cleaning it that you don't damage that spring. And I will just take some molybdenum paste, run it around the inside edge where this runs around the lens tube, run it around the outside edge where various levers act against it. And on the bird paw, some on the tip of the bird paw, some on that post at the tail. Bring the shutter back into the picture here. Some on the lever here, it holds back the pallets. Some on this lever here, on that flat piece. On here and on here and this can go into position. It's easiest if this is in the cocked position, which it is, which swings that lever away from the spring here that I'm trying to get tucked down into the shutter. Swing the B lever back out of the way, hold the pallet lever back Swing that lever back, which only comes back while the pallet lever is back. And that spring is tucked up where I don't want it. That's better. It's one of those tasks that you only need about three pairs of hands for. Alright, swing 
get it spring hooked over the post, check that the main lever moves. Now swing up this fine spring here has to come onto that bracket, to that lever there, like that. That's ready to go. It's just a thread of cotton there I want off. And I can fit the shutter speed setting cam plate. This is a bit dirtier. And certainly the outside is. This is the part uh, dirty fingers are gripping of course when you, people are changing shutter speeds so it's no wonder it gets a bit dirty. Right, with the molybdenum and paste once around the inside where it runs on the lens tube, once around the lumps and bumps of the speed setting cam and where it picks up the high speed spring for the 500 for a second speed, oh, let's run a wipe in there like that and then this should go into place. The B lever always wants to fall underneath it so you have to pull that up out of the way. Now that that's all set at the moment in the B setting so the shutter should stay open. If I cock the shutter and fire the shutter it should stay open as long as I've got my finger on the button as it does. And one second should be somewhere about here. And that sounds pretty believable too. And a tenth of a second should be somewhere about here. And that sounds quite credible. That's all looking very good. I'll just clean the retaining plate and fit that in place I think while I'm at this stage. This is someone's initials on the base of it there, presumably a previous repairer. And this plate fits here. And I've got to rotate that locking screw. This locks it in position. So there we have our shutter back together. And of course all the components need to go on the front of this before I put it on back on the camera because one of those nuisance levers actually hooks up right underneath the base of the shutter and you need to be able to get a screw in there otherwise I would normally fit the shutter back to a camera in this state so that I can um, work on it easier but there we have it, that's our shutter back together and I will fit the other components here I have the three lenses from the camera the front group here and the centre and rear group and I've just got to clean these initially particularly the front group and the centre group to remove the old grease which is gone sticky over time. It's always a trial getting rid of grease on a lens like this because inevitably you end up with some of it on the glass surface and have to go to great lengths to get rid of that to remove any smears. There's a bit of dust and so forth here too that's gathered up in the grooves. I want rid of all of that. Any dust that's in there 
could find its way back into the grease and make the focusing action unduly stiff. It seems okay. And here's the centre component that that piece screws into. Again, it's very dried out, filthy grease in there which I need to clean out. Generally speaking, this will clean out well with uh, naphtha, cigarette lighter fluid. On rare occasions you might need to use something a bit more energetic. Yeah, it's quite a bit of uh, grease. It's dried out. It's gone quite waxy in places. Really want all of that out of there. It could easily be the original grease that was used to do, do the job, in which case it's probably been there 60 years now, 60 plus. I'm wiping around the outside of the frame here too to remove any traces of grease or dust or dirt there too. Well, that piece looks quite good. I'll try cleaning the glass in that now. This is uh, probably the trickiest piece to do because it's a centre piece. The inside surface is simple, that's just plain glass. The surface facing towards the front, well that's near the, where that grease was, so inevitably it'll be a bit smeared and be a bit more entertaining to clean. Cleaning the inner surface of that centre component, the surface that faces the shutter blades, I'm judging how clean I've got that with reflected light from the window coming in from the side here. It looks pretty good. As you clean the glass you need to rotate the cotton bud so you're presenting a clean surface to the glass at all times. It's to guard against the possibility that you'll pick up a fragment of grit and um, then proceed to grind it into the lens, which would be less than optimal. Screw that down in position. And I'll just tighten that lightly. And clean the, in, the surface here facing the front. And really it's not until you get this surface clean that you can judge how well you did really with the other surface. It's not bad. This surface of course had a slight smear on it of grease so it's uh, more of a challenge to get it completely free of any smears. See that there's a hint in the corners in the edge there. once more and see how we go. I'm reluctant to use any other solvent on here to clean this because this inner surface here is painted and if I use this, an energetic solvent on there it'll soften that paint I'll end up with that spread all over the glass. 
Now that looks good. That glass is nice and clean. It's certainly clean inside and out. So that part was a success. And the rear group, or the rear element here, it probably is a group. I think that's two components on the Tessar. Let's clean that. The inner surface is virtually flat. It makes it much more, much easier to judge how clean you have it when viewing light reflections from it. I'll screw that into place on the shutter. That, yeah, it's still got a tight spot in that thread. No obvious reason for that. Yeah, and it goes past the tight spot. There's obviously something that's a bit odd there. Let's look that up. The outer surface is quite dusty. That looks good. This piece. This is our front component, the piece that screws in and out to adjust the focus. And that's quite greasy from the grease that I was trying to get off the uh, off the body of it. So this will probably have to be cleaned three or four times to get all that that sheen of oil off there. Oh, it is cleaning well. Again, this surface is virtually flat, so I can judge by reflections from the window to my right here how well I've done at cleaning that surface. It looks good. I'll get this lens started in there. That's good. To multi-start red, that actually ran very smoothly. And I'll clean that front lens now. The front surface has got a bit of dust and stuff on it, so I start by cleaning that very gently with the uh, glass cleaner so that the cotton bud will lift off that dust. That looks very good. I'm very pleased with that. Now see that the lens has three small indents there. That's where the focus scale ring will have fitted. 
and it means that was intended to go back in one place only not be not be shifted around sometimes the screws on a situation like this are pointed and they'll fit anywhere you adjust the focus and you tighten them up they'll make their own indent in order to keep them in place clearly this was all organized so that that sat in a particular place on there and it probably it means that I might I'll have to check with my original pictures and get this lens started in the correct position. That shouldn't be too hard. I want to clean this focus scale ring up. It's quite grubby. Of course, it's uh, had dirty fingers over it over the years. All the controls on the Contessa. Uh, awkward to get at. They're not conveniently placed, um, particularly if you had, uh, if you got big hands, you could find it awkward getting in there to adjust the position of the various levers. I think. I'm just going around here cleaning this scale ring. Cleaning up very well, it looks good. Okay. Of course I've got to get all these components on the front before we put this back on the camera. All of them. Yes, I think so, because this piece in particular has to go on. And that has a bracket on it which goes down to the bottom of the camera. So this all has to be on there. We can pop the shutter to one side for the moment. I want to look at this. This is our rangefinder arrangement. Counter rotating wedges at this point, and they're very, very dusty. I'll clean the outsides of them. If they clean up very well, I won't disassemble it. If there's dust in between the, the wedges, I will have to disassemble it. But I don't like doing so because they're not easy to get correctly aligned afterwards. I'll just judge looking through that how clear that looks it looks very good I'm not going to have to separate that that's great I'll check that all the screws on this little piece are tight so it's not falling to bits Now one of the screws on the back and three of the screws on the front were slightly loose. There's our scales there so it must be somewhere near the top is it? That's the top there. It fits there. That's it. I'll put the screws in place. One of the screws goes through this bracket, but I don't think it's any longer than its mates. Let's check the height of that. This one. This one's the longer of the three.
it's um, it certainly seems to be overkill the number of screws holding this bracket in place Right, get these tightened up. And there's one screw at the base there which I must remember to put in place because you do not have access to do it once the shutter's in place. It's that. Now our focus scale ring and so forth needs to go on. Just checking the placement of these. These components I put on after the shutter is fitted to the camera. The shutter as it sits at the moment can go on the camera. Got this spring and our shims and so forth from the back. This is our shutter release lever here and I'll have to check this to make sure that it's nice and straight. Um, it's the only lever that's got a nice big button on it which means that it's just crying out for abuse for people to push on things and twist things yeah looking at this it's not flat it's got a twist in it this lever is definitely twisted got quite a pronounced twist to it so I've got to straighten that up, otherwise it just won't move smoothly, apart from looking ugly. That was just a screw making a break for it, I'll pick him up in a second. Yeah, it's certainly got a twitsy up. I'm most concerned that this is flat across here so it's not tight. It needs to move quite freely on the camera otherwise the shutter release action will be unduly stiff. I think that'll be okay. Right, let's see about this then. The positioning of this. Where did it go? It's going to go there. Yep, definitely goes there. I'm just checking the lay of this. Yeah, there's still a bit of distortion there I might need to see the back of. Alright, a bit more work. <laughs> 